Okay, Mr. Pickens, firstly, thank you so much for your patience. It has been so long. Um, just to recap, we've got three watches here, the most important of which is the one you wanted to start with. We have an 0674. This is actually a fairly... You don't see these too often. I actually have one of these in pretty good shape. It's got a good circuit and everything, but it, I think the LCD's bad. These were just so... They were really expensive when they were new. So, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with this. The displays for these are just... Um, this is a 7006. Absolutely nothing surprising about this. This is complete and original watch. Very, very typical for what Seiko did at that time. A, a very good standard... Uh, dress watch. But the one that really matters, the one that we really care about, is the astronaut. Now, you work at, at like Kennedy Space Center, correct? You you work for NASA. You actually know Gene Kranz. This was actually worn in NASA by you during the shuttle program. And that's what these, a lot of the, it was an unofficial watch of the the, the the space shuttle program. A lot of these got worn in space. They're very cool how these work is is they're 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 a multi-set. You turn this. I'm not talking I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just generally explaining. You have all these different places go like this and it will change the displays instead of pushing the buttons. These have a series of pushers underneath and the underneath of the ring has is different thicknesses, so as you turn, it'll actuate this or that thing. The pusher seals for those are tiny. They're like the size of a flake of pepper. Very, very hard to find, and if you get the wrong size, you'll either, you won't get any kind of waterproofing, or the buttons won't work, um, so, because they'll stick. So I'm going to, I'm going to look at that. It's a nice condition. Gosh, you took care of it. Look at this. Look at how few marks are on the clasp. You're very good with your watches. Mm -hmm. That's the original bracelet. This is what they're supposed to look like. Okay. Well, let me get this back off and okay. let's read it. So this is one of the more... This was made in uh, 1982. So this is one of the more modern style Seiko Quartz watches and then it has one of these sort of uh, larger batteries and all of these resetting instructions in here. Huh. After replacing the battery, turn the rotary switch two clicks with, with pushing two buttons. So you have to turn the rotary thing and do the thing. So I've got to get a uh, this out of here, and the biggest deal with these really is um, is dealing with the the, the case you're and the buttons because it's really it's it's there's just a lot of stuff that can that can go wrong. But I do want to get that out my old battery. Come on. I should have taken this battery out a long time ago. That was stupid of me. Trusting that everything would be okay. Stupid thing to do. Thank God. Oh, there it is. Look at that. It's that black um, fibrous composite material that you see in 7123s. Hmm. And there's your LCD screen. Look, it's perfect. Undamaged. Nice looking. Okay, that's good. That's definitely something to, to, to be careful with. So I'm going to put that into a container. Yeah, you can see here are the buttons. Right there. Looks like they aren't really moving up and down. I'm sure the seals are stiff as hell. 
and you got your shear clips on there. Okay, well, I'm going to strip down the case and we'll start working on this. That's going to be the biggest thing. I do have button seals for this, but I'm going to pull this off. Getting the glass off is going to be real interesting too. But you know what? Everything is interesting. Okay, onward and upward. Got it. You just have to use a series of basically little wedges around the edge to get it to come up. Um, though I could have just, if it was any tougher than that, I would use the uh, Omega bezel tool and that's kind of like a gripper and it goes from all sides. It's normally not necessary, but... Wow. So you can see these are the tops of the pushers. All the old grease on them. There you go. That's the pusher. And there's that itty bitty seal. And they just float in there. So it's just one of those things, especially down in a humid environment, that's going to have to be made carefully. Um, I want to find, I'm sure I have a CR2016. I just want to confirm that the LCD is, is up and running. I mean, it was before, it just, it just occurred to me this second that maybe I should look at it. Um, that's a 2016, right? Yeah, it's a 2016. I have a 1616, which is not right. Ugh. I never use these big batteries is the problem. Tell you what, I'll use... I'll figure it out. Okay, I did verify. The movement is alive. The LCD is good. Um, I can't test the functions right now, but that's okay. They did... They, everything was fine before, so... <sighs> so now... I'm going to get this stuff apart. Okay. Well, this is now I'm getting into fiddly stuff. So, um, and we're going to get to the case and I, I need to rip this apart and really be on top of it. So we'll come back. Okay. I'm on the final stages of reassembly. There wasn't anything, you know, dirty in this or anything else like that. Uh, but you, I do need to, when I do a quartz, you always need to, it can look fine, but there can be corrosion or battery stuff on the inside so you have to pull everything apart and check all the connections i'm actually in the process of right now putting this back together so these that's one of Seiko's amazing innovations these little those little gray strips that hold the uh the lcd panel are a kind of uh get off of there they're a kind of um conducting material uh that has conducting and non-conducting elements that talk to the little the 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 lcd connections inside the screen and that is how they look and that is pretty cool that's the reflecting mirror that you see right there moving back and forth so basically you have this free floating lcd screen with all the elements that if you look in the light one way you can see and so that's back in place so now i'm going to drop this section, the circuit and everything, in here, into this, uh, I guess you'd want to call it maybe a movement holder. And uh, we can go from there. So I want to assemble this, but I'm going to be, I'm going to want to be more or less right on top of it. Yeah, a lot of times these movement the, the best holder, especially for something like this that has that absolutely irreplaceable, um, absolutely irreplaceable LCD panel is to keep the, the holder in the case like this. Yeah, let me get right on top. Okay. That's all in. These are interesting. They have, um, these, the... The connection, the switch levers here are, um, they're free floating. They're only held in place by these little tabs. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting that there are these wear marks on the back of this composite circuit material. I, I don't see any marks on here that say that it was ever serviced or looked at. It's just interesting that there's these scratches here. Hmm. Anyway. So 
So all this stuff got went through the nice cleaner, get all the get all the gunk off of it. And you can see, by the way, let me make sure you can actually see this. These holes right here, those are the actuators for the for the control. And here are these buttons. They come from Seiko with the the little seals are already on them. So these pushers, whoops. So these pushers can push those connections up and down. second. Darn it. That's what I get. This is your alarm spring. Without that, you are sunk. Sicko loves these little free-floating alarm springs. I don't know why they don't ever firm them into the movement or hold them anyway. They just kind of, everything just kind of gets put together and you just hope. <clears throat> Here's the movement spacer on the back. It's super exciting stuff. Oh, this is the neat little bit right here. This is the variable trimmer. This uh, gives you, uh, uh, it, you can adjust your rates here. Um, and so that's gonna be a lot of fun. Variable means we can get it really, really super tight in terms of accuracy. Uh, just a great thing that Seiko did because a lot of Quartz watches at this same time did not do that. You got what you got. And that is it. Let me be right on top of this so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so those things are together. I've got your contact here. The cool about this is it has the it has these instructions in here. Pre-internet, this stuff was a lifesaver. Heck, even now it's a lifesaver. I don't have all these instructions memorized. You'd think I would, but I don't. Get out. Out of the package. Oh, I see. It's sealed in a blister pack. Weird. Okay. I'm going to have to get a knife. That's silly. Normally you pull off the back and you're all... Oh, you know why? Because this is. these are the new childproof ones. They even they cover them in a, in a bitterant to make it so that children don't eat them. Hang on, I gotta go get it. There must be some, there must be some, um, pressing reason in order to do that. Okay, it even has a no baby sign on it. So. What the heck are they doing now? Listen to them bonking and bonking.
Okay, why aren't you seating? I think we got something out of place here. Let me look at this. Okay. Okay, so that's oh, that's done. currently alive, so I'm going to put the movement to one side, then I'm going to deal with the case, because um, I've got to put seals in the buttons, I've got the, here are the external push buttons, here are the pushers, and here are two new seals for the buttons, side right there so I've got to build all that stuff um, so this is the next fun task it's crazy if you put the wrong not so much the wrong pushers but these seals are a very particular size and if you don't have those the buttons the, the, the functions of the rotating ring lock up and they don't work because the these things have to basically have no resistance and yet be water resistant. Isn't that wacky? So, hang on just one second. Let me clean out this watch movement tray. Get this out of here. Okay, good. That's out. That's going to sit there and think happy thoughts. going to do this, which should be relatively straightforward, I hope. I think the worst is over. I have your... It's always touchy whenever you're dealing with an LCD. You just... It's always touchy. You've got to be like... That's the hard part. Man, because jacking up an LCD, you can do... Because all these really fine layers of glass. And if you stress it even slightly one way or the other, boop, done. Okay, I've got to put on these gaskets onto these buttons, which is a fine operation. So again, I want to be on top of it. Okay, so those have their gaskets on and they're sealed. So now we have to put in their handy dandy little circlips. Keep these things in place. There's nothing in the world like trying to set one of these circlips home and having it go kapoink. See if I can avoid that. Okay, good. There's one. Nice clean snick. Where is our other one? Let me guess, it is stuck to this case now, or where else did I put the darn thing? Where is it stuck to my hands? Um, as always, hang on. Found that one. It's an occupational hazard, but especially when you're not, you're trying to, I'm trying to do work for the video, which always sort of distracts me. And then we're going to get this, once I get these in, then I'm going to drop the movement in and we're going to put on the case back. I'm not going to cinch it down. I'm not going to put seals on it or anything on the case back because I'm going to have to pull that off to get that going anyway. Okay. Cool. Alrighty. Oops. Hang on a second. Sorry if that went plunk. One of the interesting things, to me anyway, about... When I find spares, spare parts for one of these watches that was not made for terribly long and they were made a long time ago, is that if one can find spares, such as the complete replacement buttons, I mean, they're new, old stock, but that doesn't mean they're new. And so we have brand new parts, brand new seals that, oh, I'm sorry, brand new pushers, and the seals, while new, are 30 years old, and they're rock hard. So, thankfully, 
I happened to find the nearest, closest, correct original piece. These are also, I don't, I'm not sure how old these are. They're old, but the packet was sealed when I got it. I've installed two now, and we're going to get the rest done. So, you know, all's well that hopefully ends well. Uh, but it's crazy. These pushers are so small, I have to use a needle vise in order to hold the pusher so I can get the, the gasket in place. Well, it's May. So the seals that I got to replace the bad seals and the pushers themselves are ancient, were ancient and bad. And so I had to actually hunt down, um, I had to hunt down new pusher seals and that took forever. Today is the second. So I am now okay, so it is April, May. It is today is Monday. Oops, the third. Oh, I see, it's a 24-hour thing. Okay, well, I don't want to deal with that. I want to set to the seconds. This is going to be pretty accurate. This is pretty accurate. This is accurate within a couple of seconds, and I only set this yesterday. Boop. Oops. I did the wrong one. Darn it. I did the wrong one again. Crap. Anyway, so while you're waiting... This watch. Come on. To come around. Uh, you still got some wear. We can talk about some other stuff. It still has the, the the cosmetic wear that it had before. I do not generally. I generally I only clean. I don't polish. I I'm gonna make things and I'm gonna make them so that they're functional, and and that's what we want. Clean and working right. That's what we want. Come on, baby. In other subject matters, since the last time I was working on this video, I learned more about the War of the Roses. I didn't know very much about it. The moral of the story is, if you're going to wipe out another family that has a claim to your throne, make sure you get all of them. Don't leave me any maternal nephews or anything sitting around. You, you want to you wanna get them? Get them. So we say 19. Don't let some maternal nephew sneak off to Brittany, because he will come back with the help of local lords who don't care for you very much, and then you will have a, oh, I see, 19. I'm only doing one digit at a time. See, I shouldn't talk about British English history. Today is... It is Monday the 3rd. It is May. It is Monday. Yep. No, I don't want to be that way. Time set. So, we're done time setting. So then we can just set this thing. Back to the time thing. And it goes click. And there you are. Alarm is loud as heck. We did time set. Single alarm. Daily alarm. Dual time. Stopwatch. Look at that. So you can you have your, your, your bus clicker. Like that. Yeah, 
There's your timer. You got your countdown timer rolling. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so now the last thing I need to do is I need to, well, there's a couple things I need to do. I've got to put the bracelet back on, but before that, I've got to put it on the time grapher and we're going to look at that variable trimmer and see what it needs. Okay, so I have this uh, QT99 is adjusted. And we're, I'm getting real consistent numbers right about this. This is, um, th this is one second. I'm sorry. No, I lied. I'm sorry. Sorry, Sebastian's making all kinds of noise. Tenths of a second, hundredths of a second. So we obviously want to get this. So that's zero, and that's zero, and hopefully that's zero. So we are going to do that. So we have a variable trimmer. This is a cool little diddly. We figure out first which way, which part of the curve, because it's a sine wave, and it's it's endless, and so we just have to figure out where, which direction we need to go. Let's see if I, if that's actually right. Give me a consistent number like that. Yeah, I think so, so we're gonna have to come back a little bit. Come on, you can do it. Come on, god damn. You're gonna hear Sebastian screaming around upstairs. He's wrestling with the dog. Yee, look at that. Two one hundredths of a second per day. Wow. Love these variable trimmers. Just doing a little adjustment here to see if I can bring it. Oh, there it is. I like to have things slightly faster versus slightly slower. I don't think it's really, it's it's not reasonable to try to get zero, 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 and expect it to hold. Well, I, this is our problem. But you get a little, little bit faster, and that's good. Come on, give me a reading. This is old school technology. Not only old school, it's old. Come on. Come on. Give me that reading. Give me that sweet, sweet reading. Hmm. Come on. Okay, for that, I think for right now, let's let's leave it at that. Let me put the case back on it and I'll revisit. Okay, so there it is. Everything works. Even the light. 
timer works, all that stuff. It's great. Hang on. We're just Sorry about that. So, really the biggest challenge was the seals for the four pushers. And, you know, I thought I cured that the last time I worked on one of these by getting a bunch of NOS ones from a parts house. And turns out that they're... Old parts are still old, even if they're new and never been used. We'll see if we can get through the rest of this video. So this was super fun. I hope you show Mr. Kranz this. You said you saw him the other day. I I do have my Gene Kranz. Um, I have not my 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 Seiko uh, my the, the, the mechanical watch sixty one oh six eighty one hundred. Sorry, sixty one nineteen eighty one hundred. But hopefully, he'll get to look at this and get a thrill out of it and if you next time you see him say hi for me he has no idea who i am but i admire him and his work so you actually sent in three watches but you wanted first or we agreed we were just going to do this one the astronaut and then we'll talk about these so we have 7006 it's a great watch just needs servicing and cleaning it's intact and original right down to the original bracelet this one, this 0634, that is 0674? 0674, yeah. This is going to be real interesting. Uh, I need to get into this and really look at it, but your LCD is roasted is the problem. Um, it doesn't have a leak or anything, but I, I have, your module appears to be okay from what I've been able to test. I don't have a good LCD for one of these. I simply don't. Um... And I'm not exactly sure how deep you want me to get into this. I can go for it. If you want me to try to bring this back, I certainly can. Um, you let me know what you'd like me to do, and we'll go from there. But regardless, this one is ready, ready to come back. And that's about it. I thank you so much for your amazing patience. I, I cannot thank you enough, sincerely. And I'm super excited about getting this watch back to you. Actually, all three of these back to you. This one, again, I can I can do, and I'll wait to hear from you. This one, I can look at. I don't know what I'll find, but I, I can look at it. Problem is, is I just don't have an LCD screen, and they've been they've been out of production for 40 years. So they're, they're not easy to find. Okay. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, thank you, thank you.